So Rotella killed my TDI. At least that's a story on any forum or TDI group. If you ask what oil to run, you're going to have two groups. It's either going to have to be run Volkswagen spec or run Rotella, Rotella, T6. Everybody's definitely set in their ways. So this is not a video to tell you which way to do it, but I've got a long-term test here and uh, let's see what happened. So if you own TDIs, at least for a little bit, you know the ALHs and prior, they had to run 505 oil which is 5W40. But in those earlier cars, I swear you could run canola oil and they'd be fine. My dad's been running mystery oil that he got for free for the last five years in his, and it's been minty. But these 04 to 06s, the PDs were known for cam wear. You had to run 505, 01 spec oil, or else their cam's supposed to wear out. Not good for it. But this car has had explicitly Rotella 5W40 T6 as well as Motomaster, which is made with or by Shell. It's at 545,000 right now, and it's not getting taken apart for engine issues. The rust, so fender's replaceable, but rockers are a little bit less fun, and frame rail, floor pans, stuff like that, it's just not worth fixing. So the main thing on this video that I wanna check is cam wear and lifter wear. So. 545,000 kilometers on a OEM cam, I think is pretty good whether you run right oil or not. The money saved on Rotella versus getting the spec oil, it made sense. And if I had to put a cam in it, I would, but it obviously rotted out before it needed a cam. So my wife's CJAA is now getting Rotella as well, so check back in a few years. We'll see, uh, see how that thing's running. I've also been starting to run the stuff in my V10 as well. The V10 got cams at 160,000 kilometers. I'm now at 320, so one of these days I want to bring it in and see how the cams look because they were wore out at 160, so I wonder what these new cams are looking at at 320 with non-spec oil as well. So uh, basically the way I see it is the money saved on non-spec oil kind of pays for the cam, but that's probably a bad way of thinking. So to check out the cam on this, pretty easy. You pop your timing belt cover off. That thing's looking pretty good for 200,000. You gotta get your EGR valve out of there. Blow by tube, and then depending on the valve cover, it's either gonna be 10 mils all the way around or torxes. So I'll pop these out off camera and then we'll take a look. Okay, so we got the valve cover off and I've got the injector rocker assembly off. Makes it a little bit easier to see in here, but what we're looking at is, for wear at least, will be on the exhaust lobes. So exhaust, exhaust, exhaust and exhaust and we're looking for wear on both the cam and the lifters so this is what nice ones kind of look like and this is what bad ones look like so i don't remember this is out of a brm that either had 380 kilometer 380,000 or 410 but basically they dish out they wear a hole through and then your spring and your hydraulic portion of the lifter will fall out and then for the cam, you'll end up wearing the tip off basically compared to that. So that would be a really screwed cam. So you can usually see kind of where it starts splintering like that, or not splintering, but you know what I mean. So on this cam, the base, oh, the base circle, it's got a bit of scuffing on two, a little bit of scuffing on three, or one, but not near as bad as two. Um, every, all the other ones all look nice yet. And as far as lobe wear itself, so this one's pointing up nicely. So it's just starting to kind of wear there. Um, usually once kind of the chamfer is gone right here, you start saying that's kind of getting worn and I would say that it's got a sharp edge. So if I was doing a timing belt, I'd definitely be doing this cam, but it's not to the point of like pumping out of the exhaust and throwing that PO 101. Car ran great otherwise, so. If I was doing a timing belt, 
it'd be getting a belt or getting a cam kit as well but since it's just getting parted out I um, it served me well as far as lifters they're really hard to see in frame or with the cam in there yet but number one exhaust is pushing it down if you look at that, you're not seeing like, the scratching or scoring that we have on those war ones on the bench. And they all look pretty similar to that. Okay, so outside of like the cam lobe wear and lifter wear, the other issues these end up having is uh, cam bearing wear from the forces. So they have the injector rocker here that pushes here. So it has a lot of force pushing down. So I'm curious on what the cam bearings look. So that's the top side of the center one. And I'm gonna try and roll the center one out without taking the cam out, because that'll be the one that's war. So I'm kind of curious what that looks like. I'm kind of intrigued now, but so we got the center bearing out of the bottom side of my BEW. And I brought down my old cold or my old stock cams out of my V10 because I had the bearings still just thrown in there. So let's compare them. So my V10 I had 165,000 kilometers when cam was wore out. Um, it ran 507 spec, 5W30 required oil. Uh, the part numbers, or they have part numbers on them, so they're the st same bearings for the V10s and the four cylinders. But they've also got the build date. So 0106, so my Toreg was built in 02 or 03, 06, so that's how I know that these are factory. On the top side, they're not really showing anywhere. Same thing with this BEW with 545,000. But it's going to be the bottom side that shows where. Any guesses which one have 165,000 and which one has 545? So same part number. Built date 0703. So this one has, yeah, 545,000 on it compared to the V10 ones. So I decided to pull the one right at the timing belt as well. So that one I figured would have the most pressure down with the timing belt pulling it down as well as the injector pushing it down. So much so I had to get a pry bar in there to pry the cam up to roll the bearing out. That's that one. So... These two are the BEWs, and the rest are the V10s, so really, they don't look great, but the V10 with a third of the mileage, like that one's really rough. So at the end of the day, I don't know what I was really after with this video, but I just thought I would show what long-term use of non-spec oil is going to look like, and I'm pretty happy, I guess, with the results, so... My conclusion is there's a lot worse things you can do to your TDI than run non-spec oil, kind of like not under-oiling it and letting it rust away. So that's it for today.